This Hangout On Air is live. Well, hello, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to week two of the Linux Tech and Gaming Podcast. One of your hosts, I am Ubu the Tech Guru, and I'm coming straight at you. How is everybody doing tonight? So this is just a weekly podcast that we put together with uh, myself and these two other guests here that are about to introduce themselves. And it's just kind of to talk about some Linux technology and some Linux gaming. And, um, you know, we do have set topics. We, we're going to try to keep it around an hour, you know, give or take 15 minutes. And, um, you know, this is new to us, so, you know, we might change up the format in the future or we might take some suggestions. You know, we'll try to interact with you guys if you're in chat and, um, you know, possibly take you some of your questions in tw on Twitter. Um, I did put that out there on Twitter that if you wanted to ask us something, you just do a hashtag, ask LTAG, and LTAG isn't anything special. It just is the abbreviation for Linux Tech and Gaming. <laughs> so why don't we go to the next person on the podcast, uh, Osiris, go ahead. What's up? This is Osiris uh, from Osiris Tech on YouTube, at Osiris on Twitter, and today we're going to talk about some, uh, I think, some very important things uh, concerning Linux and the underlying technologies once again, which is always important, and we're going to have fun. Uh, I'm the Atomic AS, and I have a channel on YouTube where I review uh, Linux games. Short and sweet. All right. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so Atomic was busy this week. He actually is the sole contributor to each of the topics that we have this week. So we got to give a lot of credit to Osiris busting his ass coming up with the some good topics. The first one he's got today, well go ahead Osiris. De uh, delve us into the topics. All right. Uh, let me see. Let me see. Uh, so Witcher is continuing to get improvements. Uh, like we touched upon last week about The Witcher 2. Uh, for a game that is uh, relatively older and continue to see some type of improvement through development is a, is, is a plus one for Linux because, like I said, this doesn't need to happen. Uh, and they're doing us a favor. And it means also that they see Linux as a viable uh, uh, platform to make money on, which is good in both directions. It's a, it's a two-way relationship. But uh, So they got some patch notes. Uh, they did some opti optimization to the shader, shader for OpenGL, uh, drawing a full screen, quads optimized. I don't know what that means. They optimized out some memory barrier commands from OpenGL, so basically a bunch of OpenGL stuff, uh, which probably gets called through their, uh, what is it, Aeon or Eon? Eon wrapper? Yeah, Eon wrapper. So, a bunch of fixes, but it looks like... Oh, and that, was the, just, that was just two days ago, too. Yeah, so they're that's doing heavy work. I, I think that's, uh, that's commendable. Uh, but according to Atomic, there's no improvements on Intel, a multi uh, multi screen support and beta version. Oh, multi screen support is working in beta version now. So yeah, that was actually an issue I had previously. That I don't know if uh, those of you that were weren't here last week, um, I had you know informed everyone that if you run a dual monitor setup, one of the problems that The Witcher Two had was that for some reason when you wanted to set up, um, see The Witcher Two actually has this really cool um, game launching screen. It's like a little dialog box that allows you to edit the, the game launch options, you know, as far as the resolution, the full screen or windowed, uh, which display will show up on, your aspect ratio, and allows you to adjust a lot of your graphical settings as well. I think um, other game developers should take note from this because this is just this is similar to um, what was that game that we played through? Borderlands. No. Was it Borderlands. Uh, Skyrim. No. no. Um, it was us three. Um, Atomic. What? Uh, what was that game that we played, where it had a launcher prior to the game? Uh, trying to. Trying. Yes. Thank you. Yes. Trying to. 
So similarly to Trine 2, it has this neat little um, dialog box that allows you to configure, you know, a lot of stuff prior to you launching the game. So I think that's really, I, I actually like that. I don't know how you guys feel on that matter, but, but anyway, to kind of finish up my point here is now the game, the launcher actually allows me to choose the full screen resolution of 1920 by 1080. See, previously, um, for some reason, the, the game only would allow me to choose a max resolution of what my first screen is, which is on the left of my main display, and it's only a 1680 by 1050 panel. You know, it's a smaller screen. And for some whatever reason, the game wouldn't allow me to choose the 1920 by 1080 screen resolution because for some reason it must have been drawing its information from the first, you know, screen, whereas, you know, in X server, the main display I have is my screen 1, not screen 0. So anyway, so, so basically if you opt in for the beta for The Witcher 2 on Steam, um, now multi-screen support is working. So that's a, that's a huge, that's a big plus. And like Osiris says, I mean, this is a pretty old game, you know, so for, for the, uh, isn't it CD Red, Red Kit, or who's the developer again? CD uh, Project Red. Okay, CD Project Red is the developers of the game, and then Virtual Programming is the company uh, that is taking care of the Eon wrapper. You know, for both of them to be still working on this game and getting it and optimizing it, you know, for OpenGL and in Linux, uh, when it's this old of a game and The Witcher 3 is on, you know, is 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 being talked about, that's just awesome in my opinion. It's great. Yeah. It's not yeah, that I, old of a game. <laughs> well, you know, in, in game years, it's pretty old. <laughs> Uh, well, when did it come out? Uh, 2012. Yeah, so it's about well, two years. Well, that's a pretty old. Game. I mean, that, when you t when you're talking, you know, recent games, a two-year-old game is pretty old. In With my no opinion. multiplayer support. Right. Yeah. Uh, and then you got to. Well, well, my my biggest thing is that they, uh, like I said, it, it has to make money and it has to be about money when you're talking business, and the fact that they. Are working on The Witcher 3, and resurrected The Witcher 2, and brought it to the platform, and continue to uh, show improvements on it, is is very that it's a very good thing for us Linux folks. Uh, yeah, hopefully definitely. other companies will do that, and they take uh like if this if stuff like this is is successful, like Civilization 5, um, XCOM, Witcher, uh, and whatever pretty big name games come out on Linux. If they're successful, you, you will see the bigger publishing houses follow suit because they'll follow the money, of course. And I'm talking about Ubisoft and EA. And, and once they legitimize it or, or back it, then you'll see, I think, it it, it, it kind of makes the, the platform more legitimate to the regular gamers who don't care about OS, what their OS is. They just want to get the best performance and play the best games. Right, right on. Yep. So, uh, yeah, there, there's just a bunch of open GL things. Uh, I, I don't know, like, I don't know what the situation was is with AMD yet, though. Uh, because I don't see anything here about AMD. I don't think I see anything in the comments about AMD. But that's something that's has been a sore point for most games. I'm not sure if it's just driver support, if it's... I don't know what it is. Well, that's been a sore point, not just in games, but on the desktop. Oh, <laughs> so, it's driver, so it's a driver problem. Yeah. Well, what we need is for Linus to go to AMD and give them the middle finger, and maybe they'll fix their drivers over there. <laughs> <laughs> right? Yeah, exactly. Hopefully, I, I was under the impression that uh, Nvidia drivers were already better than AMD before he called them out, though. Uh, I don't know. I didn't have AMD. So I'll tell you like this: on gaming for Windows, Windows Nvidia drivers are more mature than AMD drivers. Uh. <laughs> In, in presentation and in function. 
Uh, I know some people will disagree with that, <laughs> but I've tried them both within an hour's period, and there's definitely a maturity difference between them. So I'm, I'm sure that spills over into definitely spills over into the Linux platform. And considering that AMD's uh, priority is not Linux, neither is it for NVIDIA, uh, those things will will parody each other as far as it's concerned, as far as uh, performance goes. But it's, it's abysmal, though. It's just abysmal for Linux as far as AMD goes. I don't understand it. Yeah. I mean, I'd be happy to... Um, you know, I wish there was somebody, some AMD uh, company, either like Sapphire or XFX or, you know, some AMD um, vendor. I, I would love to be able to communicate with them and, you know, set up a set up a, a test bench and just help them, you know, figure out these damn driver issues. I mean, I don't know. I, you would think that they would be working more closely with, like, uh, Farinix and that website they do tons of hardware reviews and and whatnot, you know. Yeah, yeah, I agree. Uh, I actually thought about the same thing, but I don't. That AMD has an uphill battle, it seems like, as far as business goes on their primary platform. So dealing with this other stuff, uh, also don't forget they're also primarily in consoles. So I'm sure there's still R and D going on over there in that department. Uh, right. So. I don't know. I, I just don't. I personally just don't see it happening anytime soon. It, this has been a long time issue, and it doesn't seem to be a priority for anybody except for the open source guys, who are make, who are actually doing better than the AMD guys as far as AMD drivers go. Right. So I, I don't see it changing personally. Uh, yeah, but that, that's basically the gist of that that article. Uh, Witcher 2 is still getting updates. Matter of fact, there's a lot of games getting updates on Steam, uh, and I like to see that. I like to load Steam and see updates. That means something got fixed. Right. Oh, speaking of that, we don't have a listed, though, but Rust, uh, pretty, a very popular Linux game and Windows game, is being seeing not only continuous and daily updates and new builds, but the developer, um, uh, my name, his name escapes me at the moment, but he developed uh, Gary's mod, Gary Newman. There you go. <laughs> uh, he has said that they're going to completely tear down the original Rust and rebuild uh, the game. Now, I oh, that's can, a huge, a huge undertaking. Holy cow! Yeah, well, 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 his excuse, not his excuse, but his reason was um, that the, the game grew faster than he expected. And the amount of the code that is behind the game now can't make up for what, what needs to be. So he has to do it. You can actually play the new beta, or that's already alpha, so I don't know what you call this, the alpha alpha. <laughs> uh, when you launch the game, it gives you uh, the choice of playing the experimental version, and it looks ten times better. It's gorgeous. And it's in Linux? Yeah. I tried them on yeah. Linux and Windows works good. Oh, wow. I don't think I knew... Wait, did I know Rust was for Linux? Maybe I did. Never mind. Okay. <laughs> yeah. So, I, I, once again, I like to... And not only that, so Rust, the, both games parody each other. I mean, the experimental and the alpha version parody the Windows version once again in performance and and how it uh, runs. So, once again, that's another prime, prime example of how a, a pretty... Good size public or developing house is paying attention to Linux, not as just something on the back burner. Right. Yep. So, what about this new API? APIs. Yeah, I heard this uh, a few days ago, maybe uh, so Sunday or so. So, you know, I, as some of you might know, uh, the new OpenGL four point five was announced and at the same time though the people the Cronus group or yeah the Cronus group the people that are behind uh, the development of OpenGL announced a completely new API that is going to be multi-platform and have the 
same principle uh, of driving force that's behind OpenGL, making it multi-platform, open source, and free to use without any type of uh, publishing rights and all that good stuff. Uh, but Microsoft jumped in there, and they're also backing this. But uh, some of you already probably know that Microsoft has been a long-time supporter of open source, uh, even though it seems counterintuitive. But it's always good to see Microsoft behind this type of stuff. But it's, an, it's a new 3D graphics API like OpenGL, like Mantle, like uh, um, Direct3D, like Metal for Apple. So this, this is a, just another API, which makes me wonder if they're, if we're once again, spreading the Linux ecosystem too thin. Right, yeah. No, we're just going back to the days of the API wars uh, back at the turn of the century. <laughs> That's not going to be good. <laughs> so, okay, wait. So I'm trying to read this here. This is, um, what is the new library called? Um, I don't know what it's going to be called, actually. I don't think yeah, there was a... It looks like WebGL. Yeah. Or is that the Web working group? WebGL is the working group, I believe, but it could also be the name of it. I don't know. Developing future revisions of this JavaScript API for 3D graphics in modern... Oh, this is just for 3D graphics in web browsers. This isn't... This isn't uh, an API like Direct3D or Mantle. Uh, Osiris, I think you misread it, maybe. This is only for 3D graphics in web browsers. Or um, am, I, am I wrong? Am I wrong? I think from another article I read, I think this WebGL working group may be a section that's doing the JavaScript API part of it. Okay. Uh, that's what that's what I got from the a, a different article. Uh, I only I linked this one because this was the the most current. So actually, let me go find another one, which is actually on the same site. So. Yeah. A web, a web browser based, 3D. API. Great, now we can play Flappy Bird in 3D. <laughs> <laughs> no, thank you. <laughs> the current, okay, the current WebGL specification is based on OpenGL ES 2.0, while WebGL 2 is based on OpenGL ES 3.0. It will be interesting to see if Microsoft wishes to get involved with the working group for the next OpenGL API working group and other Kronos cross-development royalty-free APIs. I, I just linked huh. the original Sorry, article, uh, and okay. there's nothing about Java or nothing in it. I think this is a completely new API. Uh, it says... Where did you link it? In, in the group chat over here on the right side. Oh, okay, gotcha. Um, this says this isn't just about. Uh, th by the way, this is on Flonix.com. Uh, this isn't just about evolving OpenGL, but will be a new ground-up design that will hopefully address the recent OpenGL criticism that largely dates back to the long peak days with OpenGL 3.0. So it seems to be a completely okay. Completely sure. <laughs> gotcha. Uh, and they're still we're still waiting on Mantle to open source their their API. Right. Uh, which could be, who knows, next year, year after, 2020. <laughs> Did they yeah. promise that? I yeah, they, they already said that Mantle will definitely be open source and uh, available. Well, that, okay. I don't know if they spe ever specifically did say it would be on Linux. I think people just assume so. I mean, well, yeah. Um, it could, okay, go ahead. Yeah. Yeah, go ahead. So somebody will pick it up and... and yeah. uh, Right, if it's if it's open source, right? I'm sure because if it's sure a close to the metal, people, yeah, exactly. People will want to utilize it. If it's close to the metal API, that means it's written in like C C plus plus, so it's not not gonna be difficult. Uh, it's not it's not platform dependent in any way. Right. So yeah, there's a lot of things going on. Like just it's like, and <laughs> the way I see it, it's kind of like a swirling storm of. Hardware, software, APIs, all kinds of development just going around and around in, in the Linux, in the in the Linux world, and it's just getting better by the month. Really, uh, could it be moving faster? 
I would like it to, <laughs> but th this is definitely a huge step from like 2000 and what 11, 12, where there was virtually not one uh, game that that was that was a big name title on Linux at all. Right. Yep. So this is yeah. So announced OpenGL 4.5. Not OpenGL 5.0, huh? Yeah, I don't. I don't know if you know the backstory kind of behind this, but uh, developers have been increasingly, increasingly complaining about OpenGL and its convoluted uh, system uh, of writing for it, and it's been a source spot for OpenGL, a huge source spot for OpenGL for for a number of years now. Uh, not. I don't really understand though. Why is this like a fork, or is this like just some completely new project? Why does it exist? There's there's OpenGL. Could it can the OpenGL been could it, could it have been fixed? Like there's a I don't there's not a, like a lot of answers or as to why, not to me at least. Yeah. Um. I'm, you know, I'm far from knowledgeable. I'll be honest. I'm far from knowledgeable on, you know, the the technologies, you know, underneath games, whether it's Direct 3D or uh, OpenGL. You know, I I don't really understand any of that stuff since I'm not a coder. Um, I just know that you know there's DirectX, which it seems like. Um, Microsoft kind of cornered the the market, and most games are developed for DirectX. And you know, OpenGL seems to be like you said, it's uh, something that's never really been perfected. I guess I don't know. So we'll see. I guess where this leads. Yeah, yeah. I definitely don't know much about the un underlying technology, but I do know how I feel about APIs and the fact that. Most games are optimized for Direct X, and Direct X has a better, has a better, uh, what do you, what do you want to call it, effect system. Games that are written in Direct X and OpenGL simultaneously, like uh, Euro Trucker, have better like blooming effects and uh, lighting effects on Direct 3D. And once again, if you're a gamer, you probably spend a little, a decent chunk of change for your computer. You would like to, to get those nice little effects. Right. Yep. So that's my stand. That's my standpoint on APIs. I wish uh, Barnacles could jump in here. He's a he's a coder, and he might be able to, you know, kind of give a a uh, a layman's you know a quick layman's explanation of you know the the, the graphics uh, API war, the graphics graphics API. Discussion, you know, I talk. I sent him a tweet saying, you know, ask him if he could pop in here. I don't know if uh, if he popped in here or not. I, I don't even have the chat open for the damn live stream. I don't know what I'm doing. <laughs> <laughs> well, I've had it open. Is. Yeah, I've had it open. Anybody? Mm -hmm. uh, anybody commenting? No. Okay. Yeah, we only have what one. We have one viewer. <laughs> it's probably you. You have it open. Yeah, it's probably me. All right. So okay, moving on to. The next topic, what do we got, Osiris? Netflix is now available to be ran on Linux or Ubuntu, uh, which is uh, oh, I think, Yeah, I read something about this because of the HTML5, hey? Yeah, yeah. Nice. Um, so uh, my question is, maybe one of you might know this, is that uh, the reason that everybody hasn't just jumped onto this HTML5 bandwagon uh, immediately is because of the DRM problem. Flash kind of automatically mixes security block, just for the for because of what it is is what I understand. HTML5 is not as easy to control. So what are they doing to control it now? I have no idea, but I was under the impression that the uh, W3C think is what controls HTML5. Yeah, the, they, had allowed, they had allowed DRM into the, uh, the specification. 
Okay, that makes sense. For people who don't know, W3C, the World Wide Web Consortium, is uh, basically the foundation that that agrees what standards go into uh, like HTML5 or say uh, PHP or that type of stuff. Uh, so yeah, okay, well that's good, I guess. <laughs> I, don't, I mean, it's, it's it doesn't. I guess that doesn't matter if the people who are using Netflix are happy uh, and they're getting it now. Because actually, it's, it's ironic because I had a guy who was asking me how to get Netflix to work on his uh, Ubuntu desktop about a week ago, uh, and it's you can run it through Wine, you can do this, and you can do that. But as, as Linux users know, workarounds are not always the most fun thing to try to get working. Yeah. Right, exactly. Now, this more than gaming is actually something I see as bringing more people to Linux because the majority of people who use Netflix through a computer are going to be running probably laptops, running Intel, and Intel doesn't have any major problems with graphics drivers. So that would actually be a pretty smooth transition for a lot of people to move yep. to Linux. Uh, oh, the sore spot about Netflix wasn't the Flash. It was that it was requiring Silverlight. That's what it was. Yeah. Uh, which is a Microsoft-specific technology uh, for for delivering video content. So, yeah, <laughs> that's a thing. I forgot about that. But, um, yeah, this is, like you said, this is great because uh, the guy was trying to help out. He was getting pretty frustrated that he couldn't even just watch Netflix. So this this is a, this is a good good thing for a lot of people. Now, does Netflix have a hardware software survey survey in the vein of Valve? None that I've seen or know of. Uh, that's, what something I would, like, that's something I'd like to see from them. I'm sure that they have that information uh, if it's publicly av publicly available or not because you have to connect through your web browser, and web browsers will tell the server if they're on, if they're a Linux or a Windows platform. So I know they know. And I don't know if that's public or not. But I would assume I would assume right off the bat that it's pretty standard across the board. Even like it's, it's probably one to three percent of of all users. If you don't count those little boxes, like what are they called, Roku's and all that stuff? Yeah, yeah but those, those probably count separately. Yeah, yeah. No, I don't. I don't. I disagree with that. What do you wait? What do you see? You're saying they don't count that much, uh, Atomic? No, no they would count money. separately. Oh, okay. I mean, uh, I I would think that those take up a majority of uh, Netflix users. Per you know, I think. Like Most all likely. those, like Apple TV, Roku, the new, you know, um, well, the new Intel Nooks, those are basically computers. I mean, they're, mi you know, microcomputer, basically. So I guess those aren't really considered the same exact thing. But, um, you know, I I don't know. What do you guys think? The, I suppose we could, we could look it up, what the majority of hardware is that Netflix users are using. You know, let's actually, I want to check that out. Most common device used oh, to watch Netflix. Uh, I gotta mute myself. My 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 phone. Yeah, I agree with you. But I think that the majority of people are probably using uh, set top boxes. Uh, what I'm wondering is if it get. I don't. What 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 does the server count it as? Like, because I'm pretty sure most of them are using Linux firmware. Well, it looks as if the Roku. Uh, might use Android. I can't tell. Hmm. I think according to Linux Action Show, it was using some type of like specialized Linux. Matter of fact, I think that was like some type of battle between Roku and other people because Ro people were reverse engineering Roku, and the Roku didn't like that. But Roku was using Linux, so therefore they don't have no say <laughs> in that matter. So there, there was kind of a thing going on between it. And it was because they they were using some parts of the Linux kernel, like yeah, if it's Android, that would be the same thing. It it would be the same principle. 
Uh, I just did a quick little Google search, and I don't. Some of these articles are a year old, but it's saying that the PlayStation Three is the most popular streaming device for Netflix. Hmm. I don't know. That if doesn't that's, surprise me. Yeah. <laughs> PlayStation Three. I don't know. That kind of surprises me, only because it's PlayStation Three is really. I mean, the majority of people that buy them are gamers. And yeah. you would think that they're buying it to game on, not to watch Netflix on. But think, apparently, you know, I'm wrong. <laughs> the majority of people who buy PlayStation 3s are adults. And they also throw them in their living rooms and half the family probably watches Netflix. And also high school students pro- watch a lot of Netflix instead of standard TV. Matter of fact, True. That's, right. that's, that's probably an overwhelming majority who probably watch some type of internet streaming than, than standard TV. Right. So I can see yeah. that. Not to mention, like, how many PlayStation 3s are there in the world? Like, there's hundreds of millions, I'm sure. Right, yeah. Well, I mean, to the to the basics of the of the topic that we were touching on, I, I mean, that's great that, um, you know, you can now use um, Netflix natively in Linux and have it work. It is, it is a still, it's still a slight workaround, if I'm familiar with the, with the procedure, isn't it, uh, Osiris? You have to do something um, in the in the Netflix browser on your computer, don't you, to get it to run in in, in Linux? <coughs> Excuse me. Uh, in the Chrome browser, you mean? Yeah. Uh, yeah. I don't think, yeah, but I don't think it's like uh, terribly uh, hard to do. And before you had to run Wine and run it through that and get Silverlight, which was much harder. So, you know. I don't. I don't. It's better. <laughs> we'll, we'll just say it. Oh right. No. I'm, I yeah. I definitely agree with you. It's. It, but I'm just pointing out. It's still. Um, it's still a slight. Yeah, let's see. Yeah. You have to. Not supported by Netflix. That's for sure. Okay. So you have to actually. You have to checkbox a. Prefer HTML5 selected in your Netflix account under playback. That's how you do it. Okay. Prefer okay. HTML5 instead of Silverlight under preferences. And you have to download a library file, it seems like, too. Which isn't hard, but it's just something else you have to do. Right. Yep. Oh, yeah. This live NSS3. Gotcha. Okay. Nonetheless, it is still, you know, better than um, having a, a brand new Linux user trying to install Wine and get, you know, and, and trying to have them understand that and install Netflix under Wine and. <laughs> so this yeah. is great. You know, it's definitely great news for Linux. Exactly. All right. So we got the next topic. Uh, go ahead, Osiris. You you did all the legwork here. All right. Well, um, looks like Linux got their first um, game development kit uh, that's native to Linux. There's been quite a few Linux games who that have popped up on uh, Steam and other places lately in the last year or so. But all of them have been developed on Windows to be sold on Linux. And, you know, a lot of people are going to be like, well, Linux is a perfectly viable platform for development. Matter of fact, that's probably what it excels at. Yet there is no development environment for gaming. But Leadworks, or Leadworks, I'm not sure how you pronounce that, uh, have now made it available through Steam. You can't buy it... uh, through through the any, any other means like and I don't I think you have to have Steam running for it to work. It's like a game, like a game application, which is also kind of uh, uh, one of those things. I don't know. Seems kind of weird, but it's out there. Uh, and from what I've heard, it's not any better than Unity or any other. Matter of fact, it 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 works good, but it's there's nothing that it's great about it. So. I don't know. I don't know what what, what you what you, what's there to think about this. It's here. That's all I can say. <laughs> yeah. So wait. So we don't know if there's any games that have actually been developed using Leadworks. Leadworks is not a very popular uh, um, game engine. Uh, I'm trying to look now to see if there's any type of uh, uh, like list. Oh, so here's the here's the. The thing about Leadworks, they had a Kickstarter uh, not long ago, about a year ago, and 
part of the Kickstarter was that if you fund this Kickstarter, we'll bring it to Linux. And that's the thing. So if it needs Steam to run on Linux, it's not really brought to Linux. That's one of, that's one of those things I'm like, I don't know. That seems like some shady business. I'm just trying to I'm trying to uh, read some of these comments about about this uh, this article and trying to understand you know if there's any games that have actually been developed using Leadworks. So you're saying Leadworks? It's it's a it's a game development like software package. Yeah, kit or environment, much like Unity or uh, the Unreal Engine, and, you know. That's okay, what and it, and it was and it's just come to, not necessarily Linux, but it's come to Steam. You're saying is that what or? Yes, that's what see. it looks like. It looks like it came to. You have to run it through the Steam runtime, which means is I don't even know if that's really native, like because Steam has its own application layer. <laughs> you know, you can make calls to Steam. Steam makes calls to the system. So I don't know. I don't know. Like, I don't know. I'm a I'm a glass half empty type of person when it comes to trusting companies. So yeah, I'd have to look into that more. But it seems like this is a this is some shady business, especially when you when you when you do a Kickstarter and you make a promise. Like, if you fund this Kickstarter, we will bring this to Windows, Mac, and Linux. So if I'm a Linux user and I and I help fund this Kickstarter, expecting it to come to Linux, I don't really, and if I'm a developer, I don't really expect it to come to Steam. I expect it to come to Linux. So, And this is not the first time there's been some shady stuff like that on, on Kickstarter that where they don't fully flesh out their promises. Yeah. Huh. I wish we had some more... Or I wish we had some examples of actual games that were developed by um, no. Leadworks. I don't even see. <laughs> <laughs> like, I'm looking and I don't see it. Usually, if you type in Unreal Engine games, you'll find you'll find plenty of games that are made under Unreal or any other engine, even Unity. Yeah. Huh. Well, it looks like uh, I think it might be a completely new engine. Uh, like it's not even that old. That could be it. So yeah, I'm looking at Steam right now. The Steam forums. It says what has been made by Leadworks. Uh, and the re reply by the developer was this: br This is a brand new version of the engine, rewritten for cross-platform support. Released today, which was uh, the comment was on January 6th of I'm guessing this year because there's no year by it of 2014. So it's a it's a it's a new plat it's a new environment. So there are no okay, problems. gotcha. But you know if you're an, if you're a, oh that was the other part. So if you wanted to license or use Leadworks or Leadworks, it's not that cheap either. Compared to Unity and Unreal, like Unreal Engine is dirty cheap. Like it's like fifteen dollars a month, and it's that's one of the premier game engines in Linux. Right. Yep. And th these people are, are trying to charge. Let's see. I think it's four hundred dollars. A cheap. month? No, 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 no. <laughs> I don't oh. think a month. No, okay. I don't. <laughs> it looks like it's a one-time charge, but yeah, it's a hundred for. One, one, uh, one license and three hundred for a four pack. Well, there's there, the one hundred for indie edition and two hundred is the actual the whole full blown suite. Uh, the the indie edition only has Lua sub script support, while the the standard edition has C plus plus and Lua script support. So that's oh, I'm reading this and it's uh this is a weird little uh, statement. It says single user license for making royalty free commercial games. Okay, never mind. I read that wrong. Royalty free, but commercial. 
Yeah, I don't know. This doesn't seem like if you're if you're a game developer, this doesn't seem like this would be your number one option. Yeah. Even if you're on Linux, <laughs> you you might have to dual boot or something. Yeah, so we'll, we'll see how that turns out. Like, so basically, there's no games. It has no history. We'll see what some aspiring young developer makes of it. Right. <laughs> wasn't uh, isn't there a new? I mean, this is off topic a little bit, but wasn't there a whole new Unreal Engine game coming? Unreal Tournament, the newest Unreal Tournament, and it's native to Linux. Yep. Yep. Uh, actually, it's a. Uh... It's available now. You can get the pre-alpha builds, like the super pre-alpha builds are available on Linux and Windows right now. Okay. I mean, there's like... There's yeah, like, this is no pretty recent. Initial Linux support was announced as part of the Unreal Engine 4.1. Yeah, there we go. Unreal Tournament 4. But, you, but uh, I don't think that the Unreal <laughs> development platform works on a uh, Linux quite yet like it you can it's, it's been ported but it, it's not something that you'd really use right now okay that's the way I've, I've read into it so far right so the options are still pretty slim all right well that pretty much wraps up talking about uh, lead works uh, the next topic we have is um, something that I just recently added, and it's a it's an article on uh, Ferenix website again, which is a, a great resource for anybody just jumping into the stream now. Uh, Ferenix.com. It's p h o r o n i x dot com. I pronounce it Ferenix. I don't know how it, you know if that's correct or not, but. They have, uh, they're, they're like my number one source for anything Linux, for hardware, for graphics cards, graphics drivers, everything. And this article um, is talking about how um, the open source Radeon driver is catching up to the AMD uh, proprietary driver. And um, they do a bunch of uh, benchmarks and testing with uh, the, one of the, the best cards they have is the Radeon R9 290, 4 gigabit version. And um, now they, it is important to note that they're using um, the, they're using a, a very recent Linux kernel, uh, 3.1, let's see. 3.17, yeah, and um, a very late uh, or a very recent um, like I image of the Mesa 10.3 development graphics stack, and you can get that um, if your Linux operating system can use uh, PPAs or personal package archives. Um, it's uh, Oabaf PPA. You can get uh, the latest Mesa, you know, um, driver. And it looks like the um, open source Radeon driver is 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 catching up to the proprietary driver, you know, which is which is which is good news. I mean, any any uh, improvement, you know, for drivers uh, in the graphics department uh, in Linux gaming is you know is good. We need <laughs> we need any improvement we can get. Whether it's with the proprietary driver or the open source driver, um, you know some Linux users are, you know, they're actually against proprietary drivers. They don't, you know, they believe in the whole open source kind of foundation that Linux is, and they won't use proprietary drivers. So, you know, um, this being the open source driver getting improvements. Uh, is huge for people like that, you know, that don't believe in using the proprietary drivers. <coughs> I now, the difference, to... well, I just wanted to point this out for those that, you know, maybe don't understand the whole open source graphics driver versus proprietary graphics driver. The difference being the proprietary graphics driver is closed source, 
and it's you know you can't see the source code, you can't edit any of the code to make it better or worse, um, and that's what proprietary means. That's you know basically how all pretty much all drivers are in Windows. They're all proprietary drivers made specifically by the hardware manufacturers, you know, to work with their hardware. Now, the open source driver, anybody can contribute to making that driver better. You know, that's what open source is. It means that the code is open and available to anyone, and you can contribute to making it better. You know, so that's the whole kind of gist behind open source versus closed source and proprietary drivers. Uh, one thing I want to point out is I noticed that the R9 290 has no open source support. I uh, did actually just see that, yeah, as I was looking. And that would probably be because the 290 and the 290X use a different chip architecture than all the other ones that are listed here, including the 270X. Uh, I think it's called Tahiti. Uh, if I'm not, or Hawaii, or I don't know. One of those island things. Hawaii, I think it is. Okay, but he did he did state in his article that um, these tests were ran against the Linux 3.16 kernel. So, um, and then he points out if you go to page two, Osiris, on the article, it it talks about the R9 290. Uh, once the 3.17 kernel merge window is over, then he'll uh, apparently the R9 290 Hawaii GPUs they do work with the open source driver when you're using Linux kernel 3.17. Uh, here, here's a well. As a user, I would take issue with immediately. Uh, this is August of 2014. The R9 290X and 290 have been out since like last year. This time, uh, if you bought one of those cards, you would have been AOL for like a year. If if you preferred open source drivers, if you preferred the closed source drivers, you would be getting huge uh, hits to your performance but because right. AMD drivers would, would have sucked or not even installed. Yeah. This is this is a bad situation in my opinion. It's just for AMD. Yeah, it really is. I mean, I wish, I don't know, I mean, we've said it enough times. I wish that uh, the AMD people would get off their ass. I mean, it's clear that the, the open source developers are clearly working on the, the Radeon you know the Gallium 3D Radeon open source driver. It's clear they're working on it, the, you know, as best they can. But the proprietary closed source driver, I don't know. It just it kind of moves. Uh, it seems like it moves slower for some reason. I don't know. Yeah, I kind I kind of agree with that. And if you're if you were actually shopping for a AMD card for whatever reason, like you're loyal to that brand or you prefer it or you can find an excellent deal. You probably still want to stick to the 7000 series, really, to be honest. Uh, it's, it's much better supported than the R9 series is and seems to, to get less of a performance hit than the R9 series does. Because, like, I, I'll say that the 290X is a absolute beast of a graphics card when supported, right? There's not much out there that you can buy better than, the, uh, than it right now. The only thing that you can get better than it is the 780 Ti. The 290X even beats a Titan in gaming performance. Uh, and you can get it pretty relatively cheap, the 290 and the 290X. It's just that as a, as a Linux gamer, this, you're better off with a 780, much better off with a 780. And none of us are made of money, so we have to choose what's, what's best for us. Right. Yeah, I think I'm going to Team Green with my next upgrade. <laughs> I mean, I'm not. I'm not gonna say I wasn't without issue with uh, Nvidia either, especially when Ubuntu, what was it, 12 and 11 were out. Installing the drivers with this Linux, missing Linux header problem. I don't know whose fault that was, but that was a, that was a big pain for me. Yeah. Um, looking at again on the same website at Fairnix. Here, I'll put it in the uh, put it in the chat so you guys can see. Um, there's an article about um, the AMD uh, closed source proprietary driver and uh, showing API tests or API test 
which is an open GL test. Um, and it and it tests like specific specific um, graphics things like dynamic streaming, GL buffer, sub data, specifically, you know, it, it's like testing the API, the OpenGL API, and specific things within the OpenGL standard. And <clears throat> um, just to give you guys relativity here, those of you that are listening, you know, and cur- and wondering whether to buy AMD and or to buy NVIDIA, and you're you're a Linux gamer. Um, these some of these tests are really disturbing. I mean, if I if I look at um, say an API test that does um, it does the GL map persistent. If I just take an, an Nvidia GTX 750 Ti, the frames per second is 141. Now, if we compare that to the AMD R9 270X, let's just say, um, running the same test using AMD's closed source proprietary driver, it's only getting 28. Yeah. I mean, that is absurd. 141 frames per second versus 28 frames per second. And and we're not talking about cheap stuff here, people. The the R9 290 starts off at around four something, I believe, 400 US dollars. Uh, so that's, it's not cheap hardware, and it, that's not even cutting the mustard at 22 frames per second. No, it's not. The, that's just sad. I don't understand how the the closed source driver can be in this bad of shape. And, and that's these are just budget card too. Well, yeah. and these are these are just standard OpenGL calls from from what I understand, so right? It, Am I reading that right? These are just API. Yeah. Tests that do specific OpenGL um, tasks, like yeah, you... G- GL map unsynchronized. If we look at the frames per second, again, just a low level or mi- like a low level card, a GTX 750 um, is 1.9. Well, that's a bad example. And then the ATI or the AMD is 1.3, but that's so that's a bad example. But the disparity between or the differences between these. Cards is it just it shouldn't be this way. I don't understand what the what's going on here. <laughs> it's the, really disparaging. The proof <laughs> that AMD uh, driver is completely broken is that if you look at the Nvidia cards, there's not a difference between a huge difference between the 740 and the 780 Ti. The 780 Ti is probably the absolute best single GPU video card you can buy on the market right now. Uh, so yep. there should be a large, large difference, which means that whatever this test is doing is probably CPU bound to some extent. Uh, it's not it's not maxing these cards out. So the fact that AMD can't even get <laughs> into like the ballpark with that means that there's something fundamentally broken with their driver completely. So I, I, right. I like you say, I don't know. I have no idea why. But it would be nice if AMD would come out and say, hey, at least we're working on it or something. <laughs> and I the like thing it. I just... Uh, go ahead. No, go ahead. The, the thing I just find weird about this is they want to keep their closed source drivers closed source and go to all the trouble to actually make them even as broken as they are <laughs> when they could just put out the specifications for the cards and let the community do the work. Right. Yeah, and you know and you know what, at this point, I don't even think the open source AMD guys want the proprietary code because it's shit. <laughs> yeah, I was just about to say that. I it's think proof. That they... I think it's proof right here just in these little micro benchmarks that this freaking catalyst driver is garbage. I think there's things in the AMD driver uh, code that they can't weed out that's right. uh, important yeah. to their, their company. That's why they can't just open it. Oh, them. right. Yeah. yeah. Uh, who, who, there's no telling what's in the driver. Code. But, uh, yeah, like, I don't expect, you know what, and it's, the funny thing about it is that AMD has, has been uh, historically a large supporter of open source. They create their own open source standards. They 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 give into the open source community a lot throughout the years. 
uh, you would, and it was, uh, actually AMD is, I would say it's preferred on the Linux side as far as uh, most Linux users I've known. So I don't understand why they completely, I don't know if they turned their back, they cannot fix this situation. I don't, it seems, it seems like a rather odd situation. NVIDIA doesn't care about open source. <laughs> That's the feeling I get. They don't, they don't care about that. And their 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 Linux driver pretty much parodies their their Windows driver, so they're not doing too much to it. It doesn't seem like they, they, they're probably doing some tweaking, but they're not doing too much to it. Yeah. Huh. It's right, and it, the fact that even Intel shows pretty decent performance says something that. I don't think this is as hard as problem as it should be. Hmm. Yeah, I think the uh, topic that I started on the Ubuntu forums last year sometime showed that the that at that point the Intel drivers we're doing fantastic, and they've gotten better. Now, if now if Intel could just bring out a uh, 300 watt TDP card, <laughs> 300 <that'd be> watt. <laughs> yeah, 300 watt. You know, with, with the 14 nanometer process they're going to here very soon, that would just that that would kill the Titan Z. <laughs> uh, maybe I'm confused. You want Intel to bring out a GPU? Yes. <laughs> a dedicated GPU. That would be something else, yeah. I mean, that would just put a wrench in NVIDIA and AMD, you know, their battle that they have every freaking release cycle. You know, it's it's always who can, you know, make the the, the top crazy card, you know what I mean? Yeah, I don't think uh, Intel wants to compete in that space. NVIDIA pretty much has it sold and locked up. AMD, okay, this is what happens for the last, uh, AMD and NVIDIA always switch spots. People tend to forget that NVIDIA was in the exact same spot five years ago that AMD is in right now. Their GPU is <coughs> running hot. They pretty much maxed out that die size, uh, and there's not much else they can get out of that. Uh, they matter of fact, if you go on YouTube, it's pretty funny. Even Nvidia released a little commercial advertisement uh, showing them people using their 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 cards as uh, leaf blowers and stuff. It, it was hilarious. <laughs> <laughs> That's how bad the situation was. Even Nvidia had to acknowledge it. <laughs> so, AMD AMD is, uh, has uh, leaked or somebody has leaked the R9 285X specs and. They have moved to what seems to be a new architecture, and uh, the the power usage and the heat has co- come down considerably while increasing performance. So I'm, I, we're going to start to see another swing in AMD's uh, uh, way of doing things, or well, at least their their GPUs coming soon within the next year or two. And I bet you Nvidia is going to max out their Maxwell sooner than later, since it's probably built on Kepler to some extent. Uh, I mean, what we've seen of Maxwell so far in the 750 Ti is impressive, to say the least. I mean, the amount of uh, power that's required for that 750 Ti and for it to do as well as it does is just shocking. I think their Maxwell series cards, the 880 is going to be, I think it's going to, I don't know, I think it's going to be just insane. Uh... Now look, have you seen the 870 specs? Uh, no, it's, it's not going. It's, it's not going to be much better. They're going to give us the usual 15% annual upgrade, 10 to 15% annual upgrade, <laughs> like they always do. Uh, yes, it is uh, less uh, power hungry than uh, Kepler's, but I don't believe they have shrunk the die size either. Once they shrink the die size, the problem will come back. Uh. I don't know, but in any case, AMD's 95 degrees Celsius uh, low temperatures are like 
absolutely ridiculous. Like I had the 295 or 290X in my computer, and that 95C, <laughs> you can touch the side of your PC case, and, and it'd be noticeably warm, hot. No, it's not warm. It's hot. <laughs> wow. <laughs> And I don't even feel comfortable running. Like, 95 Celsius to us Americans is 200 degrees Fahrenheit. That's fucking hot. <laughs> Excuse my language. That <laughs> yeah. is really hot. Oh, my gosh. Yeah. It's, it's approximately 200 degrees Fahrenheit. So that's that's a lot of heat dumping, not only into your case, but then it gets blown out into the room. So I guess if you need a good space heater, well, there you go. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. AMD does, I will admit, though, AMD is, it looks like they're, um, you know, putting more efforts into their APUs. Yeah. I, you know, with the release of the A10 7800 and the A6 7400K, the 7850K, you know, those APUs um, are pretty, pretty, uh, you know, pretty damn good, good, game good cards. I mean, uh, I'm sorry, good uh, CPUs for, you know, those lower, for lower budget gamers that don't have money for a discrete graphics card, you know, those are awesome options, I would say. Yep, yep. I think, and I, and I think that's been AMD's game plan for years, even when people were uh, shunning them because they, they came out with a lackluster FX series uh, CPUs. I don't think AMD was ever focused on the desktop uh, enthusiast market for the last five years. Uh, APUs yeah. have been their thing. Yeah, but, uh, because I think they realize that, I don't know, that they can, you know, definitely put out a, uh, a competitive product to, to Intel. I think they made a mistake on the FX series, really. They, they banked on something that didn't turn out to be any good. That that whole, like, the 8350 is a 8-core. But the way the architecture is, is not comparable to Intel. It's got shared L3, shared L3 cache, so it's really like 4-cores. or with Oh, four, okay. With 4 virtual cores. Okay. It's got 4 physical cores, but those physical cores, due to being underpowered and not having enough uh, cache, turn out are equal to Intel's four cores. So it's, the 8350 is really just four cores in the real world, uh, as far as any okay. normal person is concerned. Yeah. Unless you're doing something that's specifically written towards multi-threading, and it can use the AMD's multi-cores. So, but when AMD probably first started developing this, which was a long, long time ago, they banked on the fact that Intel didn't have an answer for this. Uh, but it didn't turn out that way. Uh, it's probably just a, <laughs> one of those things. Yeah. I'm still going to root for AMD, though. I'm going to be a lifelong AMD fanboy. <laughs> because yeah. when Team I was young, young and broke, they provided me with CPUs to uh, overclock, and ATI pr provided me with uh, affordable GPUs. Yeah, my first ever discrete graphics card was a... Uh, an ATI all in wonder 9800 Pro, and I actually still have that in an old uh, Windows XP uh, installation that I still have in the in the tower. <laughs> I was uh, expecting you to say it was a it was a coaster on your desk. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's actually I actually was just loaning it to my uh, my girlfriend's mom. She was using it until she ended up finding a new computer, and. Uh, um, it needs a new cleaning. I need to reinstall. Well, I'm probably going to put Ubuntu on it now since it's back in my possession. Get get XP off of there and refresh everything. And I don't know. Maybe I wonder if uh, my my question is is how you said it was all in wonder, right? Yeah. So yep. that's the one with the TV tuner support, right? Yeah. Exactly. Yep. That, that works in Ubuntu. Uh, I never tried it. Hmm. I don't think I ever tried it with Ubuntu. That'd be interesting, cause I I've seen uh, those all in wonders, those older ATI uh, TV tuner cars, pretty pretty cheap. Like they're they're kind of everywhere, just floating around, cause they made a lot of those. I, matter of fact, I had several of them. Yeah, apparently there is um, there's software actually in the Ubuntu 
software center that um, is made specifically for the ATI all in wonder TV capture cards. Sweet. Yeah, so I guess it works. Throw some, uh, what do they call it now, Cody? Used to be XBMC? Yeah, they're renaming it to Cody, yep. Throw that on there, and there you go. Got your HTPC. Right? Yep. <laughs> That's, great. That's awesome. All right, well, I think that pretty much wraps it up for this week's uh, episode of Linux Tech and Gaming. Uh, make sure, you know, if you guys uh, want to check out our social media sites, they're all in the description uh, below of this video, each of our YouTube channels and each of our Twitter Twitter handles. If you want to follow us on Twitter and stay up to date with what, what each of us got going on. And um, I would just like to say that I'm going to be on Tech Talk tomorrow at 8 p.m. Central, 6 p.m. Pacific Time uh, with Jay's Two Cents and Barnacles. So if you guys uh, didn't get enough of me here, you can... Come and listen to me tomorrow at, uh, like I said, 6 p.m. Pacific or 8 p.m. Central. Tomorrow on uh, Jay's, I'm not sure if it's going to be on Jay's Two Cents YouTube or Barnacle's YouTube because they switch off every other week, I believe. So I don't know wh where it's going to be, but I'm sure you can follow me on Twitter and you'll see uh, where it's going to be tomorrow. You guys have anything? Obviously, uh, plug your channels here. Sure, yeah. Yeah. Uh... So I got some things coming up. I think I've got some custom stuff I'll be doing in my PC case that will show up on the channel. Uh, I'm going to probably be doing more gaming, probably more live streaming. at twitch.com slash Osiris. Uh, you can just search on YouTube for Osiris Tech because just because I can't get the URL for some reason. And you can find me on Twitter at Osiris, O-S-I-R-E-Z. And like I said on, at the beginning, I'm on YouTube, and uh, I occasionally stream some Minecraft, just whenever. And I've done it on all three of the streaming sites, Twitch, Hitbox, and uh, YouTube. And my Twitter is the Atomic Ass. All right, well, thanks everybody for coming. Uh, be sure to check us out next week again on Wednesdays at 7 p.m. Central. That's it for tonight, guys. We'll see you next week. Later.